Welcome to the newest addition to My Way, featuring Tarek, the Gym Knight. Let's start off by going over Tarek's passive and abilities. Passive is Bravado, which after casting a spell, Tarek's next two auto attacks deal increased magic damage with 100% attack speed. Each auto attack also reduces the cooldown of all of Tarek's abilities, excluding his ultimate. His ultimate is not effective by his passive's cooldown reduction on the rest of his abilities. Tarek's Q is Starlight's Touch. It's an AoE heal that can stack up to three charges. Combining this with your passive means that Starlight's Touch will pretty much always be up, if not just coming off cooldown. And there's really not much else to say about it. You heal. That's it. His W is Bastion. You can cast it on an ally, giving them a shield as well as passive armor. It's a tether. If they run outside of that range, it breaks, they lose the passive. However, while an ally champion has Bastion on them, all spells that you cast will also be casted on that person. This helps to give Tarek a lot of presence in team fights because you can stun people you're not even close to while also peeling your backline to help your squishy and make sure they don't die. Tarek's bread and butter is his E, Dazzle. After a short delay, you stun all enemies with a fabulous beam of starlight, leaving them wondering why is this even fair? Your ultimate is Cosmic Radiance. After a two and a half second delay, all teammates in the radius of your ultimate are invulnerable for two and a half seconds. Take a little drink real quick. <sighs> this ultimate can be really tricky to time. So a good rule of thumb is, if you think you need the ultimate, you should have casted it a second ago. Otherwise your team's gonna die. Here's an example. So we'll go over runes and masteries next. Your masteries should look exactly like this. 12 in cunning, 18 in resolve. I spent many, many matches playing Tarek, tweaking my masteries to find out what I think works the best in pretty much all situations. This is the result. When it comes to runes, you should have armor marks, scaling health, seals, magic resist glyphs, and movement speed quints. Armor marks are always good on a tank. Scaling health seals because Tarek is actually a pretty squishy champion without building health. Magic resists glyphs because, you know, it's always useful. And movement speed quints because Tarek has no initiate. He has no way to stay on people. So movement speed quints combined with boots of swiftness, which we'll talk about shortly, help him stay relevant when it comes to chasing people down. Your core build on Tarek is going to be in this order, I have Equinox for your gold income and ward. Boots of Swiftness since you have no engage, you need to be able to catch up to people. Iceborne Gauntlet for damage and to help stick to the enemy once you catch them. And a Spirit Visage for MR, CDR, and to increase your healing on yourself so you're not dying, so you can help save your squishies. If the enemy team is a well-rounded mix of AP and AD carries, last two items in your build should be a Banshee's Veil and a Dead Man's Plate. If you're going up against a mainly AP heavy team, go for a Banshee's Veil and a Wit's End. Wit's End allows you to deal even more damage with your passive and helps to get all your other abilities off cooldown in combination with your passive. And finally, if you're going up against a mainly AD heavy team, go for a War Mogs for the extra health and health regen as well as a Thorn Mail and laugh as they can do n literally nothing to stop you. You will literally just help your team steamroll everything. Now that we've gone over all of that, let's talk about your skill rotation. Most likely you'll engage with your Dazzle. After this, pop Q, W, Q back into your stun. Make sure that in between each one of your spells, you're utilizing your passive to the fullest of its extent with the two auto attacks. 
During laning phase, your job is to get your Targon's procs and help poke the enemy as much as you can. Always be ready to peel for your ADC. If you ever find yourself alone in lane, the best thing to do is last hit minions and try not to push the wave too much. If your ADC isn't doing well, pushing the lane is only going to hurt them even more. Here we have a gank inbound to bot lane. Eve is coming from the river, and Fizz is coming from Tribrush. I know that if I catch Ash, it'll be an easy kill for us. This time, Sona is attempting to take vision control of the river. I go to stop her with the help of Eve. While we're busy taking care of Sona, Kogma starts to get focused heavily by the Ash, so I pop my ult to make sure we don't trade a kill. With Sona dead, we take control of Vision at River and then set up for an easy dragon for the team. While Eve is setting up to gank, I make sure to get the Targon proc on the cannon minion, and then I notice that Ash starts to auto attack me. I punish her with a stun and an ult, thinking we can easily dive him under tower and get a couple kills. They use both ults to stop us, I end up tanking the tower. But because of my well-timed Cosmic Radiance, my team is able to dive the tower and secure both kills. With both of bot dead, we easily take the tower for the team. After pushing and leaving bot lane, I notice that Kogma gets hit by an Ash ult. I ult and stay on him to make sure he gets hit by the ult. Once the ult is done, I make sure to exhaust the Volibear while Fizz comes up to secure the kill for us. Well guys, that was Tarek my way. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and I hope all of you can stay fabulous. As always, I am Sparkles, and I will see you guys next time.